uh, in this episode of Finno Greek Machining, we are finally um, uh, <coughs> installing the chuck into the lathe. Well, I uh, received the package today, this one, and uh, we are going to open it. <laughs> and uh, let's see what's inside. Uh, it's Okay, well, four bolts, yeah, exactly as they are, with nuts and all, good, and what we have here, okay, oh, well, yeah, contains one, <laughs> there is an amount of uh, chucks, okay, It has a small hand operated late chucks, and this is a bit of three jaw chuck. Uh, well, we are having four. Uh, I want to. A lot of trash coming from this. So then we have the four mounting bolts in there. Good. Uh, these are probably hardened, so. Oh, and we have a nice <laughs> oh man. And uh, the regulation still. Uh, we have again this uh, <clears throat> How do you get rid of this? Yeah. Spring. Oh yeah, it's a nice spring. I uh, save the spring. Don't throw it away because it's a good one. Okay, now it's usable. <laughs> uh, the chuck key. Okay. What else? Well, the chuck itself. Well, of course, uh, oh, that plastic is oily. It's really nice looking. Let's see how this feels. Oh, and it's smooth. Really smooth and really tight as well. Okay, now just uh, let's uh, drop this on the wall floor. <laughs> that big for the lathe but it's not it's really a suitable size and uh, what we have back here we have okay I need to make these uh, contours these uh, recesses uh, on the back plate and uh, that's uh, what we are going to do next okay uh, so uh, the first feature uh, I will do in the back plate is uh, the true hole. <laughs> and the diameter of that one, well, let's measure it here. I have a snap cage which I now put in here. Oh, the surface finish is, uh, in the hole is a little bit rough. Hmm. Okay, anyway. And in this case, uh, goisometer accuracy is enough. I just used the snap gauge uh, to... Well, it shows here 50 millimeters. Hmm. Well, I guess it's 50 millimeters. So we make a hole of 50 millimeters or less, depending what we have on the spindle. I don't remember. Well, let's measure it. It is a little, not just a little bit, it's uh, the spindle bore is actually less than 50 millimeters, so uh, we don't make it 50 millimeters. Make it, we make it equal to the spindle bore, and then we make a chamfer 
into there. So uh, the reason for this is not to damage uh, when you put the stock into there. Uh, so then you don't damage uh, the uh, Moss uh, 5 taper in there with your stock. So um, therefore I, I don't want to uh, there be a ledge uh, inside the hole. I want uh, there be a chamfer uh, from 50 to probably I will measure it what it was in the ledge but it's less. So uh, uh, the spindle bore was actually 36 millimeters. Well, uh, we are boring <laughs> quite a lot here. Let's see. I'll uh, check that we have all our. Well, this uh, stop should be all right, so we can use automatic feed here. Let's check the feed direction and the speed. Speed seems to be all right for this diameter and. Uh, then the feed direction well, is uh, quite fast for okay now it's better then I will touch, touch this one okay and then we just uh, Keep on going with the uh, well half millimeter cuts first, and then uh, we increase it uh, when we have more room to one millimeter. until we reach uh, something like 35 millimeters in diameter. Well, uh, we are at the moment, this is now 35 millimeters. And uh, well, this is not exact science, it's uh, 35 millimeters about. And now I will take first one millimeter, no, 0 0.9 millimeter cut and then I will uh, make a better surface finish here by making 0.1 millimeter cut with a very slow feed. Uh, yeah. So let's take the 0.9 millimeters first. slow down the feet like that oh well let's get rid of the chips in the hole well I can vacuum them there you are almost all chips gone and we have a horrific burr on the back side there uh, that should be dealt with as well. Um, okay, now I can see that uh, the spindle is larger at this side. Uh, there is about uh, five millimeters, but this is because of the Morse uh, taper. And now we will, uh, 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 well, yeah, let's uh, do the last mile here. The finish. speed a little bit like that and there you are feed in a little bit so I don't scratch the surface 
space. And now we should have a decent finish there. Oh yeah, the, the chips are... And I think it took care of the backside as well. Yes, it did somewhat, but uh, we need to... Let's see... I... And now, yeah... We have the 36 millimeters here, here in my snap gauge. So I try it out here. Well, it fits in nicely. It's a little bit larger, but that's okay. So, the next thing is to put a 45 degree taper here so that we get uh, to the 50 millimeter dimension. And uh, now we are doing a 45 degree uh, taper with this one. And, uh, well, uh, with the compound, feeding with the compound. The final diameter after the taper, the outer here, should be 50. <laughs> uh, so when I stick in uh, uh, material, it uh, should guide uh, the material into the hole. So uh, that should be uh, making my <coughs> material sticking a little bit easier. So, uh, now let's, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, do the taper and uh, uh, the, the speed first. Well, it is probably, uh, I think we could use a little bit more. Let's see the next. It's loud. I don't like that. this one. Now I find the edge in there. Well, I found it already. <laughs> so then I just... Uh, so now it's 36. So we have 14 millimeters to go. So let's take the first millimeter. Just uh, how this feels. I need to feed uh, manually. So this is that was first millimeter, second millimeter. Well, this is actually quite easy. The tool pressure is really low with this type of insert. easy to make a mistake here. Uh, the, let's see uh, if we are around the correct. That should be near 50 now. Yeah it is. So uh, what we should take is uh, not take uh, the full millimeter but 0 0.9. Okay almost make a big mistake here. anything from the start. Ah, it does. Good. And then like that. And there you are. A taper. <laughs> well, I would say it looks great. 
I would also like to make a similar in the back side because I can. <laughs> this is a really um, a flimsy setup, but uh, it was possible. We have a really long stick out on the bar, so we cannot make uh, deep cuts. We have uh, not much to go on here. So. feels it's really let's uh, oh. vacuum the chips away so it's easier to touch feel it okay we have well I think we have a decent corner I just uh, now finish it uh, make a finish surface there Point one millimeter like this, and then very, very gently. And I can hear from the sound when we are finished. Stop it! So now we have a good uh, hole there for uh, for this uh, center hole. It doesn't look bad when you <laughs> look into there. It uh, makes easier to stick your stuff through. Well, now the next thing is to make this portion. I will rough cut this first. Well, let's see which surfaces are the ones that we should use. Actually, is it uh, this outer rim or... Well, this looks like this surface is the one we should be using. <coughs> okay. Uh, well, now I'm uh, cutting uh, this uh, part uh, of the uh, chuck backplate. Uh, uh, the, this should be... Uh, that here is a reference surface and this one should be quite exactly six millimeters uh, lower than this surface. So I'm taking a six millimeter, uh, sorry, half millimeter cuts and uh, well uh, the speed is uh, really slow because uh, if I may make the speed any higher it uh, will produce chips that are really uncontrollable. So the surface finish becomes really bad, but I don't mind it at this stage. I can always make uh, it better when uh, I'm uh, near, nearer the target. Um, and then we have these uh, holes there which uh, are capable of breaking uh, the, uh, the plate. Uh, the, the insert and uh, yes and this material is still really hard so let's go and in uh, real time this takes about uh, well quite long time to finish
really rough uh, surface. But I need to do this uh, now. We are at the depth of uh, two millimeters, so four more millimeters to go. So it is means eight passes. And uh, in the last pass, uh, I will. When I'm in the last pass, I will come back to you. Okay. Uh, now I will uh, take. Uh, there is a burr uh, here. A re recent points. I will. Slow this off because I'm going to measure this piece. Oh yeah, there is a lot of them. And again we have a razor sharp edge there. But uh, this is not removing the burr, this is removing uh, just to make the measuring possible. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So now, this should be the height of uh, this, uh, should now be uh, somewhere around uh, uh, 5.8 uh, uh, millimeters. Uh, let's see what it really is. Uh, yeah, I'm pushing it quite hard here. Okay. Well, uh, hmm. well, it is actually, well, it's not 5.8, let's see now what it is. Yeah, oh yeah, it is uh, actually 5.82. <laughs> uh, I believe this is 5.82. So, we have uh, a little bit less than uh, 0. Uh, two millimeters to go and uh, I really would like to make a good surface finish for this one although this is not a functional surface uh, this is just providing us uh, room for the things inside the chuck and uh, the functional surfaces here are this this is very important and then uh, the diameter of this uh, this is another functional surface so this is not a functional surface. And now I will uh, put this uh, insert uh, holder there and I will put it in an angle. Let's see now if I can put it in an angle. In a very slight angle like that. That looks like a good one. And then I go uh, first of all I need to check that I have clearance. I can do this, yes. Then I put it here. And then I will uh, touch the surface. Zero my dial here. And let's see if this agrees with my measurement. Huh, it does. Actually it uh, really does. And what I would like to do here now is to go very near here. Okay, we need to... Ah, I would like to check the... Oh, now it was speeding this way, so now it is speeding back. Uh, we are going to use very low feed rate here. And uh, speed, not, no more back here. Uh, that, I assume, is a good one. Yeah. Okay. And now I go near the edge, very near. There you are. And now I dial in one-tenth of a millimeter here. It. Uh, I don't uh, feed, uh, feed. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Now I first will take uh, like tenth of a millimeter, and after that I will uh, take whatever is left uh, from six millimeters. Okay, uh, did the first one and uh, it's uh, really smooth, uh, yeah.
So uh, let's measure the uh, depth of this. It should be we should have one uh, hundred, one tenth of a millimeter to go. Uh, we have a little bit more. Uh, at least this one is telling us uh, 15 hundredths of a millimeter. Let's see from this point how we look here. Well, it's telling about the same story. So 15 hundredths of a millimeter. Uh, 15 hundredths of a millimeter. Okay. Again, I will try to go as near as possible to the corner there. That was uh, 10, 15. That should be it. Now if I start the... Oh! Feed. That's a nice surface for a non-functional surface. Okay, it should be quite exactly six millimeters now. Well, I have to be aware of these uh, really sharp edges. I actually already hurt myself uh, there uh, in this uh, rim here. So <coughs> it's really like a like a razor blade. Cannot move it. Oh, damn. Hmm. Six millimeters. So now uh, that one, the diameter. And now, uh, as it should be exactly, and I don't have a micrometer, uh, which is uh, reaching across that one, and therefore I need to use a questometer. Uh, I have uh, this Mitotoyo. Uh, Quesometer, uh, and let's see if uh, this one is uh, it's actually giving me at the moment quite exactly 11, I mean 111 millimeters and some change. Well, uh, 500 of a millimeter, some change. So, can I trust that one? Hmm. What else can I do? So, uh, let's assume uh, my Mitutoyo is giving me correct results. 2500 of a millimeter steps, I will uh, do it uh, down to 110 millimeters. That's the first step. <laughs> Let's see now. 110 millimeters was our goal. Oh. Okay. And uh, well, well, it uh, looks like at least we are very near. Looks like it's within uh, 500 of a millimeter. Hopefully, it's not. No, it's actually exactly. Well, quite exactly. That's uh, so. Well, 
only time we will tell. <coughs> Ended up uh, in a constellation like this. Let's see uh, how this does. I only need to take a very faint cut from the corner. As I'm here, I will also now take care of this uh, very sharp corner here in the edge. So, let me show you where I'm going. Like there. Speed is really high. Hmm. This is really high. So, let us change the speed to something more manageable. Okay. Now I probably won't hurt myself on this. Uh, okay, uh, here I am uh, roughing uh, the distance from this uh, rim here to the center. Uh, the height difference is exactly 12.25 mm. I will keep doing this uh, until uh, we get to the correct uh, diameter here. Okay, so let's uh, check where we are. <laughs> well, I'm using uh, this type of uh, measuring instrument in this case because I don't have a long enough uh, questometer. So this is uh, a lottery meter. <laughs> yeah, uh, but ah, I think uh, it's uh, accurate enough for this purpose. Then I take uh, my scale, put it on the end of that. Uh, you better have a flat surface for doing this. Looks like we are at the moment uh, 182.5 millimeters. Uh, I would like to put it down to 180. So, uh, but uh, this one is just we are making a place for the rim of the truck. I'm uh, now taking one millimeter deep cuts. This is how it looks, and soon you will be hearing how it uh, sounds. This is the collection of chips. Uh, bon appetit. Okay, uh, so how does it fit there? Well, I can uh, already say. Uh, not everything is correct here. Uh, I don't know why, uh, but uh, let let me show you. When I put it there, it uh, it's like a slip fit, but and there is noticeable uh, play in there. Probably five hundredths of a millimeter. 
and this play is coming from uh, from this and I really 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 measured it uh, many times and I'm pretty sure this is we can measure it again with a question of it a different one this time uh, let's see This is telling 110 millimeters. And uh, well, let's see what this tells us. <laughs> this is more. <laughs> there are there is uh, five uh, hundredths of a millimeter uh, if I look this correctly. Let's see, if I put it like this and uh, try to feel it there in place, and yeah, so, and the documentation tells it should be 110 millimeters, so, uh, well, okay, uh, well, in this case, uh, because uh, it's a radial play we are going to have here, uh, well, and it's uh, quite minimal. So what it will impact is the balance of uh, this thing. So, and that much uh, wiggle I actually can hammer it out. When I put the chuck in there and uh, uh, you can tighten it from the front side so I can dial it in uh, and uh, uh, I can put it uh, in the exact center. Uh, well, okay. But now what we need to do here is I will accept this. Uh, it will. It's well. Uh, it doesn't make me me happy, but uh, I will accept it. Uh, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> so uh, and I can really hammer it in. And furthermore, I don't need to make the jack screws uh, for these ones to get it out from there. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, we need to chamfer this. Not a lot, just a little, uh, not to hurt myself. And then we need to chamfer this one as well. And this one uh, should be a little bit bigger chamfer. Uh, uh, when I put the chuck into there, uh, this is uh, sort of heavy, this chuck. You can see that it's, uh, it's hanging over here. So uh, I will actually make a 5 mm uh, chamfer there, so then it's uh, more like beautiful. <laughs> it's just a matter of looks. Uh, it has no functionality whatsoever. And uh, yeah, so... And uh, well, yeah, okay, it makes it easier to clean it up. It doesn't collect the dust uh, into the so much. So, okay. Well, let's do the chamfers now. <coughs> that one is the usable. Okay. Good, good, good. Good all the way. Next step, uh, some uh, bear tongue. <coughs> this thing is called bear tongue in Finland. So, it will be for the chuck and uh, yeah uh, it's uh, uh, well I measured the chuck and I looked into the documentation and this time uh, they agree 
So I have centered this with dancing and this time uh, there was no rain to stop but uh, this is now uh, well within uh, 200 of a millimeter I would say. Uh, and uh, yeah there is uh, quite wide tolerances with the bolts. Uh, they say they should be in uh, uh, 0.2 millimeters. Uh, well uh, I can do better than that. And uh, yeah. And the depth of uh, hole should be something like uh, 20 millimeters, uh, so it will be 13 turns plus um, 0.5 millimeters, and this is not zeroed. Okay, so we start drilling. I'll take some cutting oil, the papers away from here some eye protection in case it will throw chips then we put this in low speed but high gear let's see how it feels okay. feet on <laughs> ah, the old drilling machine is starting <laughs> see <laughs> Speed motor is picking up speed. Ah, we can do that. So, what I will do, I will here, I will uh, buckle this. I get the one round at a time and stop, and round time stop. 13 times. So, first round. That was the first hole. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, uh, let's uh, tap. But uh, I forgot uh, uh, one thing. Uh, I have chamfered uh, these uh, off the camera. Uh, you need to chamfer uh, those, otherwise you will have a horrific burr all around. And yes, this is a spiral flute tap. <laughs> Hopefully we don't break it. I have a tap follower here. And yeah, uh, this uh, material is really tough. And uh, I can already feel how it is tough. And because it is spiral flute, you don't need to break the chip. Uh, yeah. But this feels tight. Oh yeah, I believe we are on the bottom now. Hopefully so. That's so, okay. Uh, here it is. Uh, the new port or chuck. Uh, well, it uh, it went okay, uh, finally. Uh, well, I made a few mistakes here, actually. Uh, the very first mistake I made was to detach uh, the jaws and uh, didn't make notice the order of them. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, Bison doesn't document this one. Nowhere. <laughs> so, uh, or at least I couldn't find uh, documentation about this thing. So, well, uh, then I have been uh, playing uh, roulette with this <laughs> thing and uh, yeah, uh, I finally found out uh, the best uh, Set up and yeah, uh, uh, well, uh, don't don't trust me on this one. But if you ever do this, so there is this uh, type uh, sign somewhere there. That one. There is a type designation, uh, and the next one is number one, and then they come two, three, and four. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, it doesn't have any impact on how they fit into the into their box. It has an impact on uh, the levelness of uh, these surfaces here. So when I, I had them in wrong order, I had uh, uh, different uh, deviations in excess of uh, well uh, uh, 50 uh, microns. Uh, so 
five hundreds of a millimeter, and that's quite a lot uh, for a forger chuck even. And uh, but when they are in correct order, they are all within two hundreds of a millimeter. Yeah. Okay, that was the first mistake. A second mistake uh, was to assume that you had to support it from the rim. No, you 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 should not actually. If you do that and you tighten it uh, on the center, it bends the chuck somehow, and then uh, these jaws will bind. Uh, so now I have here everywhere. This is a 0 0.2 millimeter uh, feeler gauge. So you can put uh, this uh, 0 0.2 everywhere. 0 0.25 you cannot put nowhere. So I arranged a 0 0.2 millimeter gap uh, between the back plate and the rim. Uh, yeah, that was one. And then, uh, well, other than that, uh, it's uh, okay. Uh, well, it's uh, silky smooth, this one. Um, yeah, it really, you can turn this with a uh, finger, which is uh, really uh, desirable. And uh, when you uh, tighten the things, they are still silky smooth, which is uh, really important. If they start uh, like being crunchy at that point, it's really hard to uh, dial in your components. But uh, this one is uh, quite good. And then <coughs> what I would complain <laughs> is the chuck key. Well, it looks, uh, sure, it looks nice, but it's a really sloppy bit. I don't like this. Uh, this is, uh, uh, it should be a tighter fit, really. There is a millimeter play in, in, in this uh, socket and uh, this uh, thing that goes into that one. So that's too much. Uh, I will make uh, a new chucky. That's not a problem at all. So, uh, yeah. Other than that, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, of the proper size for this lathe. Somebody would say that, oh man, that's big. No, it's not big. Uh, you, you <laughs> end up, uh, you quite rarely uh, have uh, too big uh, chuck in your lathe. No. Uh, this one you can extend uh, the jaws fully and they still uh, avoid the uh, waste. Yeah. Uh, and uh, furthermore, you can really chuck big components now. And you can also chuck in uh, small components. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is now ready. Uh, of course, when you put a hardened thing there, there will be whiplash. Also, chucks, uh, the accuracy of your setup is uh, delegated to the machinist. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's, uh, the chuck itself is not that accurate. No, it's uh, the setup. Uh, you have to set it up. And after that, it's uh, probably accurate. You have to set up the B plus and everything. And with hardened material, you have to use packing. That's, uh, you cannot... Uh, dial those things in without packing. Uh, no way. So yeah, okay. Uh, this is ready and now uh, in the next episode of Finno Greek Machining, since we have a lot of play in this Mors 2 cone here, we are going to remake this shaft. Yeah, we are going to do that. And uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, in the next episode of Finno Greek Machining. Till then, see you!